Hey guys, today I'm going to present Taiwan Math Olympiad 2023 problem 5. Let's first take a look at the problem statement. m is a positive integer and we consider real numbers a1, a2 up to am such that 1 over m times the sum of the ai equals 1 and the average of their squares is 11, the average of ai cubed is again 1 and the mean of ai to the power of 4 equals 131. We are asked to prove that m is a multiple of 7. A priori, m is just any positive integer and we have m variables a1 up to am. However, there are only four constraints given and this tells us that if we want to be able to deduce something about m from this given structure, that there must be something special about these exact given numbers. We want to use the given information to show that the AI must have some very special structure. For example, it would be nice if we could show that all AI are equal to some number. However, we see from the first condition that since the average of AI equals 1, then equality would imply that all AI are equal to 1, which clearly contradicts, for example, the second equality. The next simpler possible structure of the AI would be that they all take one of two possible values. In this case, it is not immediately obvious if this is possible or not. However, for proving that this structure is necessary for the AIs satisfying all these constraints, there's one very natural approach in my opinion. Namely, I want to interpret the AIs as random variables in the following sense. We say that a number i, or i is supposed to be a random variable lying in the set 1, 2, up to m, chosen uniformly at random. Then we consider the random variable a obtained by picking a uniformly random ai, or in other words, a subscript capital I. Proving that all ai are equal is really simple in this context, because a1 equals up to am is equivalent to a being a deterministic random variable or in other words to variance of a being equal to zero. We know how to calculate this since the variance of a random variable a is the expectation of a squared minus e of a all squared. This illustrates the motivation for considering the variance of a random variable to solve this problem because these two quantities are exactly what the first two conditions in the problem statement tell us. Namely, we have that e of a is the average of the ai or 1 and e of a squared equals 11. Plugging these values into our equation, we obtain that the variance of a equals 10, which is not 0, and that tells us that the random variable a is not constant, a result that we already obtained in the very beginning of the, of the video. Fortunately, we also have information on the third and fourth moments of A, which are the expectation of A cubed equals 1 and expectation of A to the power of 4 equals 131. This allows us to compute more quantities other than the variance of A. In particular, we have enough information to compute the variance of A squared itself. If the variance of a squared were equal to zero, this would tell us that it is a deterministic random variable, or in other words, that a only takes values t and minus t for some real number t. I want to note two things. Firstly, we see that the variance of a squared is indeed not equal to zero, since it is just expectation of a to the power of 4, namely 131, minus e of a squared squared, which is 121. Secondly, the result we would have obtained from variance a squared equals zero is very close to what we initially thought about. This motivates us to generalize this approach. And in particular, we want to take a look at the variance of a plus c all squared for some real number c. So let us get started with the computation. We have that the expectation of a plus c squared is just expectation of a squared plus 2ca plus c squared. And now we can use linearity of expectation to obtain that all of this is expectation of a squared or 11 plus 
2c times 1 plus c squared. Similarly, to compute the expectation of a plus c to the power of 4, we first expand this term inside the expectation. And now by linearity of expectation and our given conditions, this is equal to 131 plus 4 times 1 times c plus 6 times 11 c squared plus 4 times 1 c cubed plus c to the power of 4. To compute the variance of a plus c squared, we have to subtract from this the square of the expectation of a plus c squared. So let us first quickly evaluate this expression, which is equal to 121 plus 44c plus 4c squared plus uh, 22c squared, so 26 c squared, and then I recall that these last terms match, which is not hard to see. So we get a plus 4c cubed plus c to the power of 4. Fortunately, since the coefficients of c cubed and c to the power of 4 are equal in these two expressions, it turns out that for these specific values, the variance of a plus c squared is the quadratic polynomial 131 minus 121, which is 10 plus 4 minus 44 minus 40c plus 66c squared minus 26. Notice that this factors as 10 times 1 minus 2c squared. And therefore, as we hoped, this expression is indeed equal to 0 for some value of c, namely c is equal to a half. The fact that a plus a half squared has variance 0 tells us that this random variable only takes a single possible value. Therefore, we get that for some real number u, a is always either equal to u minus a half or minus u minus a half. Now let's take a look at how we can choose the AI in such a way such that all of these conditions are satisfied. To characterize the random variable a completely, let's say that the probability that a is equal to u minus a half is equal to k divided by m, where I am writing this in this way, because this tells us that k must be a natural number by our construction. Plugging this into the definition of expectation, we obtain that 1 is the expectation of a, which is now equal to u minus a half times k over m plus minus u minus a half times m minus k divided by m. We have a minus a half here and there, so we can pull this out. And the coefficient for u is going to be k over m plus k minus m over m, so in total uh, we get 2k minus m divided by m. This already gives us one condition for the two variables u and k, so let us get a second one by considering the expectation of a squared, which equals 11. Squaring these quantities, we get common terms u squared plus a quarter, and here we have a minus u, all times k over m, and our second value for a squared is u squared plus a quarter plus u, which we multiply by m minus k divided by m. In total, this is equal to u squared plus a quarter plus u times the negative coefficient we had before. So maybe let me write a minus u times 2k minus m divided by m. These two terms cancel when we add the two equations and therefore we obtain that 1 plus 11 is equal to u squared plus a quarter minus a half, so 12 equals u squared minus 1 over 4. Therefore u squared equals 49 divided by 4 and hence we obtain 
u equals plus minus seven halves, which is fortunately a rational number hinting at us not having made a computational mistake. If we plug this into our equation for the expectation of a and already rearrange a little, we obtain that three halves is equal to u times that term or plus minus seven halves times 2k minus m over m. Now this looks like m should be divisible by seven and indeed we obtain 3m over seven equals plus minus 2k minus m. Since the right side is an integer, the same is true for the left side and therefore since 3 and 7 are co-prime, we conclude that m is divisible by 7. This concludes our proof and I hope you have a nice rest of your day.